And now you're asking for a man who's in the top 10% of men. You don't qualify for one. I really just wanted some advice. I love your yeah, I'm giving you. I'm giving you advice, but you're not taking it. The I'm advice is, ma'am, ma'am, you're average looking at best. I'm taking it in, but... Okay, but you're not accepting the fact that... I have to feel like he's in Well, then you're going to then you're gonna die alone. How about that? You're, let me just cut to the chase, ma'am. Uh, you can feel like what you want to, but women like you die alone. Straight up. Because you think you're better than the men that you qualify for. How tall are you? 5'10". 5'10". How much do you weigh? I weigh about... Two what? Depending on the day, two. between 280 and 285. So you're a fat one. You got a big... I mean, it's above average. I ain't no Brian no, Jeremy. No, 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 no. I asked you if you had a big... I just said it was above average. You know if you got a big... Stop the bullshit. Every dude know whether or not he got a big... I know I got a big... You don't know? I mean... You don't have a big... That's the point. You don't have a big... You don't have a big one. Since my analysis on Derek Jackson, I've got requests on checking out Kevin Samuels' videos. For those of you that don't know him, Samuels is an image consultant and life and dating coach. He has managed to amass quite a following on YouTube and Instagram, I guess thanks to the way he roasts anyone that dares to have a live Zoom call with him, mostly women. And one good example is the line, you're average at best, that you just saw. Now, opinions about Samuels remind me of Derek Jackson. Half of his audience hates him and the other half defends his ways of addressing his main topic. That is what it means to be a high value man or woman and what does it take to date one. So I decided to take a good look at his videos including the glitch and notice some behavior patterns that will be useful to define his true intentions. By the end of this video, you'll have a much better perspective about how to judge Samuels and at the same time, you will acquire three essential skills to analyze on the fly the profiles of similar personas. Welcome back my battle language buddies, my name is Jesus Enrique Rosas and I'm the battle language guy. I'd be really grateful if you take just one second to like this video, subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss any of my battle language analysis and tips. Let's get down to it. In your body language journey, you will bump into cases like Samuels, people that have polished their delivery to the point that there are few reactions and emotional markers. And in this case, it's due to the fact that he has been practicing that delivery for quite a while. When you watch his videos from five years ago, just starting out, he was a bit nervous and stuttering. And that's great, that's something that we all should aim for, to do something that makes us feel uncomfortable and keep pushing until we get better and fluent. But that controlled delivery in the present time means a lack of battle language clues that we can use. Even so, battle language is just one piece of nonverbal communication and in that sense we've got a lot more sources that we can analyze to catch behavior patterns. To get to those secret clues, first we have to ask ourselves certain questions to serve as a guide in our observations. First one is, for how long has Samuels been doing these harsh interviews? Second one is, what are his intentions? And the one whose answer must be the most baffling is, why do people keep jumping on Zoom calls with him? It's important to define relevant time frames so we can have a better understanding of the context of someone's behavior. Looking at Samuel's videos over five years at a macro level, you notice that there are three main eras. The first one is the fragrance reviews. He started as a reviewer of perfumes, not interviewing anyone and just talking about the features of each brand and bottle. Then he moved into image and added to the advice, mainly focused on men, but it was more like a life coaching angle than talking about how to dress. And that's when the concept of high value men started and this concept is very important and I will address it in a minute. But then he made a slight transition and shifted his focus to women and there's a video from April 2020 with a very particular title that caught my attention. Embrace being arrogant, stop dumping yourself down. That caught my attention because I'm sure that if you ask anyone about Samuels, whether it's a fan or a hater, the topic of arrogance is going to come up. And just to be clear, Samuels has a point with this topic. Most of us, especially men, apologize too much. We are too afraid to hurt other people's feelings, so a healthy dose of arrogance is always helpful. But there is a flaw in Samuel's arrogance, and to explain it, we must address the concept of high-value man. 
So we already defined the three stages of Samuel's evolution over five years, but we still need to be aware that after this average at best video, his channel views and following exploded. And of course, everyone wanted to know which was the center of Samuel's premise. In this case, the archetype of a high value man. And he's got a clearly defined list of six items. Earning more than 100,000 a year, earning that for five years in a row, other high-value men recognize him as a peer. He's got a network with other high-value men. He's got LinkedIn-level visibility, that means that you can be public about what you do and how you earn your money. And finally, be useful to others and to the group or community. But I had a problem with this list, and one of the videos that detailed this description was the one called Do High-Value Men Deserve to Cheat? And in that video, he states that moral or ethics have nothing to do with the high-value man. So, according to Samuels, two high-value men of history could be Alfred Krupp and Stephen Duncan. They are perfect fits for this list. By the way, Krupp was the main provider of steel for the Nazis, and Duncan was the largest slaveholder in Mississippi. But morals and ethics has nothing to do with it, right? And we are getting close to the core of why half of the people despise Samuels and the other half loves him. One of the greatest problems of our time is that there is a huge misunderstanding between internal values and external manifestation. Let me use one comment on one of Samuels' videos as an example. The channel Wealth Building Educator put out a very compelling list of what he thinks is a real high value man. He's got very solid points such as emotional intelligence, have a purpose, take care of themselves, being assertive, have a growth mindset and take responsibility, none of which are mentioned by Samuels. But even if you combine both lists, they will be lacking points such as spirituality, loyalty and character and many others. And that's how we arrive at the fundamental flaw in this reasoning. We assume that we all have the same set of values to live by, but that simply doesn't work that way. We all have different sets or combinations of values, and that's great. That's why there are doctors and teachers that just give their life for others, and there are people who put all their energy on wealth building, and others seek pleasure, and others are really spiritual. That's the beauty of humanity. Now, I must acknowledge that Samuels has a point with his definition of a high-value man. It's a very practical definition. The man should be financially stable and not through shady means. Since Samuels is talking about dating and relationships and even marriage, it makes sense that he puts a lot of stress in this point. I'm not saying that being financially stable is all a man needs to bring to a relationship, but that stability, as defined by Samuels, usually is the result of other factors like work ethic, being consistent, keeping your emotions in check, having a long-term vision, and so forth. Well, hoping that you're not Patrick Bateman. And this is a great example of how we should approach human behavior. It's like an iceberg where we can only see certain manifestations. But those manifestations imply other factors that we cannot see or even measure. And by the way, if you want to be able to decipher those manifestations, you can start by my body language book right on the description of this video. So half of the people hate Samuels for the very simple fact that they've got a different set of values and they don't share his point of view. But there's also the fact that Samuels can be a real son of a bitch at times. His crude and harsh delivery has multiple goals. The first one is making people talk about him. Average at best was a video that went viral and made his channel grow exponentially. At the same time, that kind of remarks make his fans more passionate about him, make his haters hate him even more, and that creates an amplification of engagement, and you know that engagement is like crack for any social media platform. Half are insulting him, half are defending him, and if you don't know Samuels yet, then you're at least a bit curious. Now, I've noticed a pattern on Samuels' attacks, and it's that he sometimes despises women and men whose current relationship status or physical features don't fit the topic or even don't fit Samuels' standards. For example, a woman cannot talk about not getting dates if she's fat, or she cannot talk about long-term relationships if she's not having dates. And this is important because this is the kind of argument called ad hominem attack which means that you don't address the argument or the idea or the point of view of the person, you attack the person themselves. This is the kind of concepts that stress the importance of critical thinking when analyzing human behavior. And I'm going to invite Derek Jackson to give an example. 
You know that Derek Jackson cheated on his wife, and at the same time, he was advocating loyalty to his followers on Instagram. So we could easily say, hey Derek, you can't just tell people to be loyal and at the same time cheat on your wife. But the interesting fact is that if you extract Derek's advice from his persona, from his character, the advice of being loyal to your wife is sound advice. It's great advice. Now, it makes Derek a hypocrite, no doubt. But the argument of being loyal is still valid. And please, pay attention to this. This can work both ways. Derek behaves badly but gives sound advice. But there can also be people who behave morally and give very bad advice. Just think about it. We are entering philosophical grounds, but in the end, it all boils down to values. We fall prey to bad advice because we haven't clearly defined the values that we want to live by. Samuels has his chosen sets of values. Maybe you agree with some of them and don't agree with others, but that question is internal. And that's the problem with society. We don't take enough time to sit in silence and reflect about ourselves and our own set of values. And that's how a person with a huge following can have influence and not in a positive way. Ad hominem attacks are also used by cover manipulators. There are dozens of examples of how they use it, but I'm going to give you the template so you can learn to identify that. It's like this. You can't talk about this topic because you've never experienced this topic. That's how a manipulator taps into your lack of experience or guilt or past mistakes just to invalidate your argument. Now you know that it doesn't work that way, that you have the right to have an opinion and stand by it. I got questions like, can't you tell if Samuels is really like that or is he putting on a facade? And I think that's the wrong question. The right question is, what are Samuels intentions? And this is the most important question you can ask yourself when you're analyzing human behavior. No doubt he's looking to amplify his outrage and he found out that being harsh to women live is his fastest way to do that. I don't blame him for wanting to grow his audience. I want a million followers too. But I personally think that you can never leave morals or ethics outside of the equation. It will be great if you comment what's your opinion on this. But now, you might be wondering, why do women keep calling to appear in his show? And there are a few psychological explanations for this. They could be looking for attention, looking for male validation, or they feel bored and lonely, they lack a father figure, or they just want the excitement of being live with Samuels, even if it means very ridicule in front of thousands. Talk about synchronicity, but as I was researching this, the song Sweet Dreams popped up and the line some of them want to be abused couldn't be more fit. So by this point, we've answered our three original questions. First one, for how long has been Samuels doing this kind of interviews? Well, he changed in a matter of years, switching to the current model of telling the truth to women's faces live. And the fact that it's such a long way from his first perfume review that the second question, what are his intentions, is, well, he found another niche, he developed his live delivery, and he's trying to maximize his outreach and grow his audience by literally insulting and making fun of women. And there will always be women that are more than willing to jump on a call with him just for some excitement or to try to prove a point. But now there's a fourth question. Why do people keep watching his show? And the answer is very simple. Why do you think Gordon Ramsay or Simon Cowell are so famous? And the fact is that in every story we need a villain. And most of the time the villain's duty is to make people suffer. Reality shows are not much different than the times of the Colosseum in Rome. We haven't changed much since then. We gather in the same venue to watch people try to defend themselves against beasts. But nowadays it's not lions. Now it's judges that destroy volunteers ripping apart their self-esteem in front of a live audience. We watch those shows and at the same time feel glad that we are not them. And we always wonder what would happen if we were there in front of that audience, facing them up front. We also crave the desire for a catharsis, like a release of that anticipation in the form of one man or woman who manages to get back at those mean judges like a modern-day Maximus Decimus Meridius in Hispania Got Talent. There's also the fact that many people feel repressed, and watching Samuels talking like this, insulting like this publicly, it's something that they would like to do themselves. They don't think they could ever talk like that, but at least they can watch someone do it without remorse. Now, regarding that glitch... <laughs>
During one of his programs, Samuels screen showed a man sleeping on a tiny bed, and that moment he said that there was some kind of glitch in the system. Then, in Vlad TV, he claimed that it was some sort of a prank from someone who had called and showed that image in their Zoom call. Well, first of all, he was controlling his own software at that moment. I think he has enough experience using it to not make this kind of mistakes. You don't send a live feed to the mainstream without checking it out first. And he would have noticed that the person calling had a man sleeping on a bed. He would have asked directly, hey, who is this? Are you sleeping or what? In fact, being Samuels so harsh, he would have showed the man sleeping on purpose to poke fun at the call and then drop it. So I don't really buy the prank explanation, but there is something that we should address. A lot of people are really invested in trying to get Samuels out of the closet, and they found this glitch of a man sleeping on a bed the perfect proof of it. And this is the reason why I spent most of this video talking about values and the ad hominem attack. That's what makes him in or out of the closet irrelevant. In either way, you should always separate the person from what they say. Now you know that it can affect you both ways. It's much more important to realize that Samuels has his own set of values and at the same time, he's willing to do whatever it takes to grow his audience. Those are his intentions. There will always be women willing to enter that cage with him and his audience will keep on growing. I've read a lot of comments like, I don't like the way Kevin treats those women, but he sometimes says things that make sense. That's great. Not his attitude, that's his decision, but your ability to recognize what can you get from those interactions. This doesn't apply only to Samuels, this applies to any mentor, guru, and of course myself. You don't have to agree with everything in what I say. After all, I've got my own set of values, you've got your own set of values, everyone has their own set of values, but it's important that we take time to reflect and think about them. Having said that, I do not agree with how Samuel treats women. He might try his best to dress like Harry Hart, but he forgets the three magic words. Manners maketh man. Going full metal jacket on random people is never going to lack an audience, so how you pick your celebrities and how you filter their actions is going to make all the difference to avoid being programmed the wrong way. I've got more videos that will help you understand human behavior and level up your skills on body language. And don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss any of my body language analysis and tips. Take care, my body language buddies.